In this video, we're going to be discussing relationships between ENTPs and INFPs. Somebody asked about that, and I just wanted to give my experience as an INFP, how it feels, and whether or not I think they could work long-term in romantic relationships or friendships. I also want to start off by saying that for anybody who has written me an email and I've not gotten back to you, it's been on purpose. Usually, I will take a topic that you write into me and make it in video format. But if I have not answered you or made a topic, either I didn't get around to the topic yet, or because I've gotten emails of people asking to have private chats with me. While this in and of itself is not an issue per se, it doesn't help the whole of the community by having private chats with people. Secondly, I have other projects I'm dealing with. I have a whole other channel. I have work. I cannot sit down having one-on-one -on -one conversations with a hundred different people. It's not realistic and honestly it's very overwhelming and overloading for me to even think about that prospect. So it's not a slight against you personally. I do have to learn to speak up about how I feel and that's what I'm doing right now. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm not getting paid to have a one-on-one -on -one clientele and to have my time taken up to spend on a Zoom call or a Skype call with people for hours of you telling me your thoughts. I'm not a shrink. I'm not being paid by the hour. I'm not even really making money off this channel as of this video. So it doesn't benefit me to sit there for hours just listening to you talk. And honestly, it takes away from me. It drains the hell out of me. So no, I will not be doing that. If you have something that you want to address, you can address it publicly or address it in an email so that I can make a video publicly protecting your identity and so it can help everybody else. That's the reason why I made this channel in the first place. So that that out of the way, I hope that you guys don't take that personally. Like I said, I'm trying to be more direct, even just trying to say that made me stressed. <laughs> and I hate being put in that situation where I have to say things like that, but I have a bad habit of not saying anything and then I leave people on and I'm too nice and then it gets, it blows out of proportion. So anyway, let's get into the topic of ENTPs and INFPs. I have had friendship relationship with ENTPs. I'm not sure if I've dated one. I, I think I might have, but I wasn't really sure. Um, from what I can tell from the friendship side of ENTPs, ENTPs are fun to be around. Very fun to be around, um, but also very draining to be around. My aunt is an ENTP, and one thing that I love about her is that she's fun, and she will be 100% honest with you. I have a friend like that's like that as well, and then one of my characters is like that, and I had all my characters, my imaginary characters, take the Myers-Briggs test. I know it sounds odd me saying that, because you're probably wondering, but you're the characters. It's difficult to explain it to someone who isn't creative or who can't get in the mind of their characters, but when we become our characters, we become those people. So we answer the question, the way those people would answer those questions, if that makes sense. And that's how I actually got to know ENTPs more by being that character. And it turns out that the character is like a blanket character to other ENTPs in my life, actual real people, which is really interesting. Just, just one offshoot comment of how the brain works and how I find it fascinating. But anyway, ENTPs are lovely. They're fun. They're good at putting stuff together and they love working on people. They love projects as people. They love being heard. They like the attention, but oh my God, do they love to argue? Jesus Christ. <laughs> like the argue arguing is just one of those things I try to stay away from. One thing I do like is that they do try to encourage you and they talk to you like not a drill sergeant, but basically someone who is trying to help you become the best version of yourself. However, they need to learn to when to back off. And that can be a weakness if they're immature. It could be a wonderful relationship if the ENTP is mature and emotionally intelligent towards the INFP. An INFP and an ENTP relationship, an INFP, sorry, an ENTP relationship can be fun as a friendship, as a romantic aspect. I think there would need to be a lot of communication between the two. ENTPs also have a habit of being very, very proud. So you can tell them, hey, this makes me feel this way. Um, I don't need you to fix me 24 seven. I'm just talking to you about how I feel about something and what I'm gonna do about it as somebody who is, you know, venting. And ENTPs may take that and say, well, if you're talking to me about it, obviously you want it fixed, which makes sense. But there are times when you'll go off by yourself and the ENTP will be like, what's going on with you? And then you don't want to say anything and then you say something and then they start going on that lecture of how to fix you, which is not what you were inviting at the time. So those standards, <laughs> those those need to be laid out very clear. It is not easy for ENTPs to understand INFPs. As a matter of fact, my aunt, who's an ENTP, thinks I'm an extrovert. And even when I'm telling her, auntie, no, um, I'm not an extrovert. I seem that way, um, but this is how I really feel. It drains me being around people. And she She'll sit there. She always has this like two second pause before she answers stuff. And she's like, yes, you are. You're very good around people. And it's like, bitch, <laughs> you did not hear a word I just said. <laughs> 
It's like her reality is only her reality. And while I love her to pieces, she's amazing. It is very annoying communicating with her because it's as if her truth is the only truth that there is. And it doesn't matter. I'm proud and this is what I think and you're not doing it my way. And it's just like... She's also used to getting a lot of attention. She's also a doctor, which is like that whole ego complex that comes with it. And there's a lot to that. However, I do have friends that when you do talk to them, they won't get it until they sit and think about it and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna try and work on that. And you could be bawling your eyes out, completely emotional and frustrated with them. And they're just sitting looking at you like, what the frick is wrong with you? Why are you crying? It's not like I did anything to you physically. <laughs> and it's kind of hilarious at the time when you sit outside and think about it. But from their point of view, they're like, this is how things are done. This is what to do to fix it. Why are you crying? Just get with the program. And there is something refreshing about having that realism and that person to keep you centered and bring you back down to the realms of reality. They debate because that's how they perceive the world. That's just, everything has to make sense to them. If something doesn't make sense to them, they will fight tooth and nail against it. And there is nothing you're gonna say that's gonna change them unless they find some hard evidence. And I do appreciate that about it. They're also very quick on the draw. Very quick on the draw with having conversations. They like being around people. They don't mind taking charge of the room. And they do try to legitimately help people. They try to come up with solutions to help people, to help situations. And a lot of the time when they're doing that, it comes off as very insensitive. Like I said, my aunt, my imaginary character, <laughs> they have this habit of just calling out foolishness. And if you're not dealing with something in an efficient way, then they believe that you should be doing it in an efficient way over here. They basically like downplay what you're <laughs> what you think they're like you're being an idiot this is the way you do it and if you don't do it like this and you get what you take <laughs> and it's it's hilarious it's hilarious but in the moment if you're on the receiving end it's very annoying and you're like i want to be away from this person um my aunt is married to an intj my uncle's an intj and well it's he does not like arguing and i don't want to give too many details out there but it's it's rocky. It's rocky. My aunt was very pretty. So my uncle, you know, she was like, we already, they already knew each other growing up. So we went into their marriage knowing each other from childhood. And uh, over time, they had their religion and whatnot. And she just, she just takes over. It's gotten to the point where she'll just argue, 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 just for the sake of arguing. And he can't do anything about it. He just walks away and goes to another side of the house because he knows if he starts, it's gonna end badly. It's just gonna, it's just gonna go downhill from there. And that is one of the things that I will say is one of the challenges of being in a relationship with an ENTP. They are like rocks. If you want someone to get something done and you tell them, hey, this is how you do that. Can you do this? And they say, this is how you do this. They will follow it through. They will say, look, this is how we're gonna do things. This is my advice. You need to take it. And they will push through with the energy, being around people on top of it and never seem to get tired. And that is a wonderful trait. Just understand that if you were in in that relationship, you are allowing that person to take that role. Don't think that you can go and take the leader role. You're going to butt heads with them a lot. And for an INFP, that can be very challenging. We like to be free spirited. We like to have our space. We don't like people constantly talking down to us and telling us what to do. That does not sit very well with us. And ENTPs do have a knack of doing that, trying to tell you what you are and what you should be, because in their mind, you're their project. They love you. And this is the best way to efficiently make you a functional person as they can see. They like building up people and they like taking on situations and making it better or making the person functional or making them successful out of that situation. It's just that sometimes if they are not mature enough, they end up breaking the person as a result. As a result of that, they come off as very insensitive, highly judgmental and just annoying to be around. If you're in a fun setting with an ENTP, oh my God, best thing ever. They, they can take you out and show you how to have a good time. They can take you out to a party, don't really like parties, but if if I was going on an adventure, an ENTP is a person I would trust with the map and everything, and they'd be like, this is how we do this, they'd probably get everywhere late, but this is how we're gonna do this, we're gonna have fun. They're so, so fun, and they love bringing people out of their shell. Wonderful for that. Then you'll have insensitive assholes. <laughs> At the times when you're like, you don't make me wanna do this, or you make me feel this way. Okay, then fuck you then. You're just a baby. And they will come off as very insensible. Even if they're like people who know you from when you're little, 
They will still come off as very insensitive. They will talk to you in a way that's not appropriate. And a lot of the time in TPs, what is their strength in social settings becomes their weakness on one-on-one -on -one settings. In social settings, them not really tolerating other people's feelings kind of works out in their favor because it's, it's fun. They want to make sure that everyone is having fun. And to do that, you need a certain level of mental and social fortitude to be able to go through that and take on everything and to tell people how it is. When you're doing that in a group setting, it's not as bad. But on a one-on-one -on -one setting, they still sometimes talk to you like they're talking to a group of people or lecturing a group of people. And it doesn't feel very good. I would say it's a learned behavior to have to understand how people are feeling. My cousin, uh, my aunt's daughter, her only daughter, she's the same way, same personality type. And she has learned that she can't talk to everyone the same way, even though she wants to be like, why are you saying that? You're being so freaking stupid. I can't stand foolishness. She has to remember that, no, I can't talk to everybody this way. And even still, while she's making a conscious effort, she still does end up doing that. So just be mindful. ENTPs, if you're gonna go into a relationship, I would say go into a relationship with someone who is more extroverted and not as emotional because a lot of the times you may not even think you're saying anything wrong from your perspective. And having put myself into the character's shoes, they're just not, they just don't wanna waste time. Like, why do I care about your feelings? You're an adult. If you have something that needs to be done and you don't do it, what do you expect is gonna happen? Oh, your boyfriend cheated on you? Didn't I tell you he was no good for you? You know, that's what happens when you don't listen. That sucks that he did that to you, but whatever, next. <laughs> and from their point of view, life is short. And if, especially if you didn't listen to them and they told you to do something, oh God, they will never let you live it down. But they are strong. They are rocks. Very, very strong rocks to be around, but not for the faint of heart. So for an ENTP, you would have to choose someone who is willing to listen to you, willing to take your advice, also can give you some insight to try and steer you back because sometimes ENTPs run off the rails, get themselves in trouble and other people in trouble. But if you have a nice contrast of someone who is not as sensitive, it'll be fine. Honestly, in my personal opinion, unless you grew up with that ENTP, probably not the best pairing with an INFP. Just from my experience. As a friendship, sure. Although it would be very tiring for the INFP. I've had ENTP friends that just don't know when to leave you alone and don't get the concept of, hey, I need to be alone for a little while. They don't respect that. They don't listen to you because from their point of view, you're my friend. I'm coming over to your house. I don't want you to come over to my house. But why are we friends for? I'm coming over to your house and they just don't understand the concept of wanting to be alone. It, it is maddening. Um, <laughs> at the moment, aside from my imaginary character, my aunt and my cousin, I don't really know any ENTPs that I hang around on a daily basis anymore. I feel like ENTPs and ESFPs work well together. My dad's an ESFP and him, he's not as sensitive. I mean, he is sensitive. Like when my aunt will speak to him a certain way about an altercation, but when they're just hanging out, they can talk for hours. They're just like completely compatible, their personalities. But me, I just, I, I, I make like, when I'm having fun with my aunt, we're joking around, she's joking around. <laughs> She is hilarious. Like, I love being around her when we're having fun and we're joking around. Don't like being with her when she's shopping. Do not like being with her when we're having a debate. She started going into politics. I do not like talking about politics. I despise it. And she brought it up and then started going down this road. And my uncle was on the phone too on speaker and he was trying to cut it off. All right, so yeah, anyway, uh, what were we talking about? And she just kept going. Yeah, and, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> she's getting so passionate. And it, it's not coming from a malicious place. I know my aunt's not malicious, but the way it comes off, it's ups like a freaking dog with a bone. She will not stop. And you're like trying to run away from her. I was so thankful to my uncle for hanging up the call because he does not like us intervening politics either when it comes to family talks. And thank goodness for that. She doesn't care about that. So that's my opinion on it. Can it work long-term? Sure. I mean, you can make anything work. Is it a natural occurrence that is easy? No, definitely not. Especially as a romantic relationship. Definitely not. And it definitely works better if you guys gone through some stuff together and you completely understand each other. If you've gone through the ringer together, you've grown up together, it works better that way between ENTPs and INFPs. Anyways, I hope that helps. If you guys have any of your experiences or how to make this better or how to understand, uh, help us understand you better, please feel free to share it in the comments. That's what it's for. See you guys in the next video.